is Community Services and Upcoming Events. We have a great show for you today. I'm here with my co-host, Joe Holland, treasurer of the Ancient Art Iberians Hokum Alley Division 4, and our guest today, Father Fox, Father mm -hmm. Richard Fox of mm -hmm. St. Patrick's Parish, mm -hmm. and we're also here with the coordinator of the food pantry, Tom Gallagher. We're going to talk about what has happened over the last, I think we're at 70 days since the 17th when uh, the governor basically shut everything down and um, we're still in a concerning area where people are unemployed, uh, they're not able to go to work because of social distancing, and they're really relying heavily on our local food pantries. And these food pantries are the difference between um, being hungry or being full. And Father Fox and uh, his coordinator, Tom Gallagher, are at the forefront of this. Father Fox, let's talk a little bit about the uh, food pantry. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, thank you, Pat, very much. You probably can't tell that I'm smiling underneath this uh, mask uh, that we're actually doing this program, because certainly this uh, topic is uh, very important, uh, not only to our parish here at St. Patrick's, uh, but also to the wider community uh, that certainly benefits uh, from everything that we are able to do. Uh, lots of credit goes to Mr. Tom Gallagher here uh, for coordinating uh, the three days uh, that our pantry is open. And certainly he could share uh, in a few minutes uh, a few details about the specifics of how many volunteers and how many hours uh, that the actual uh, food pantry is open. Uh, but I would like to go back in time and to be able to share a little story. Uh, the story is how our parish food pantry got started. And uh, we looked in our archives, and it seems as though back in the late uh, 1980s, uh, when then uh, Monsignor John Doherty, who was now the retired assistant uh, auxiliary bishop of the Diocese of Scranton, was the actual pastor here of uh, St. Patrick's. And when he was here, he noticed uh, that there was a, 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 de a definite need uh, for people in the community uh, to be able to uh, get some extra help, especially with food. Uh, people would come and knock on the back door uh, where the kitchen is and to be able to specifically ask uh, for a, a food, a handout and so forth. And he was able to, at that time, reach right into his own particular pantry and to be able to say, here's some food. And then the word got out that St. Patrick's was very generous uh, in this area and more and more people came to the door, and more and more people were coming to our uh, simple kitchen here at uh, St. Patrick's. And then because of that, we had to organize and to be able to get more people involved and to be able to move the food pantry from the first floor uh, down to the lower level. And because of that moving, we were able to accommodate uh, more and more people. And so, uh, Tom, would you like to share a detail or two about uh, some of the details of what's happening today? All right. Basically, we've, we've had to cut back on our food pantry because of the, the virus. We now are open, starting this week, we are open Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 9 till noon. We had cut back to two days a week, but now our, because we lack volunteers, our volunteers were unable to, to uh, man the food pantry on a three-day basis. We are now re resumed the three days. Mm -hmm. We are open from 9 to noon, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We provide approximately 90 to 100 bags of food, non-perishable food, to the individuals who come to our food pantry. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we get additional, we get animal food, the dog and cat food from mm -hmm. Positively for Animals. They, are, they provide us with dog food and cat food, which we can also make available. An item that we've added lately to the non-perishable food items is a roll of toilet paper, which has become invaluable uh, lately with the, the, the virus situation. Uh, we have nine regular volunteers who work at the food pantry. Uh, one each volunteers come we stay for the day for the three hours. Uh, we have a number of uh, substitutes who fill in when the regulars are not available. Uh, mm -hmm. We pr provide a bag of non-perishable food, as I said. The mm -hmm. non-perishable food was is pasta and sauce, can of tuna, can of vegetables, cans of fruit, um, other, other night crackers. Um, other items that are available with depending on the donations that come in. 
We receive a lot of food donations. Uh, with, we also receive financial donations, and we can always use more. Hey, Mr. Gallagher, okay. how, do you need more volunteers at this time? Are you looking for volunteers? Not particularly. No. We have, we have quite have a enough? few. Any uh, substitutes had, or anything we, like we've that? We've had some that, that no longer are available because of the virus. I'm assuming mm -hmm. they are going to come back to us. But, well, I mean, we right, new, right now for the immediate time. Do you we had a sure? new we had a new volunteer come okay. in just uh, last week, okay. and he's going to mm -hmm. start officially start the, mm -hmm. on, uh, next week on okay. Wednesdays. Uh, mm -hmm. What what sort of volunteers do you usually have? We have a lot, of, a, lot of a lot of retired people, That's, okay. mm -hmm. and that was the problem with the virus. They, they, they were hesitant to come back to us. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now we are at, you know, at, have a full staff. And are most of these long-term volunteers, would you yes. say? Do they some seem of them to enjoy here for, Some of them have been here, yes, yes. They are long-term. They've been with us, uh, some of them three or four years. I've been with the food pantry, I'd say, for nine years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have any requirements for your volunteers? Uh, is there any age limits or anything like that? Other than, of course, being available for the necessary times. Do no, they, we do have they some... just work one day a week? Do they work more than one day a week? Usually they work one day a week. Okay. And they, it can be Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. We have mm -hmm. uh, some that are available all three days. We have some that are only available mm -hmm. on one particular day that mm -hmm. works out. To, to, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they, they come and work for the three hours. And, Mm -hmm. You mentioned the need for donations, of course, and of course cash always, because that gives you flexibility in purchasing, I'm sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. How are you holding up with that? Are donations coming in for cash donations? Do you think it's adequate? Well, thanks to, to the Hibernians' recent donation, okay. we're, we're doing, <laughs> doing pretty well. You're quite welcome. Uh, we've had the number of members of the parish make a donation. We mm -hmm. just got a recent donation that they mm -hmm. bought a gift certificate at Vitaly's Market, which mm -hmm. is right up the road here. Mm -hmm. And okay. they were very accommodating. How about actual food donations and or, or toilet paper? Are you accepting those types of oh, things? Yes. And what types in particular? I know you mentioned non-perishable because there's no refrigeration here, correct? Exactly. There's okay. no. We don't have any refrigeration. So cereal, cereal, soups, cereal, canned meats. pasta, canned pasta, fresh, pa you know, packaged pasta, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, canned vegetables that are all, always needed. Mm -hmm. uh, Coffee and tea. Okay. Mm -hmm. We get a lot of requests for coffee and tea bags mm -hmm. that uh, mm -hmm. uh, kind of we, we don't always have coffee and tea to, mm -hmm. to provide people, so we okay. can always use those items. Uh, we, we do a lot with mac and cheese and the mm -hmm. things that are like people can make one meal out of. Mm -hmm. uh, it works very well. But, uh, mm -hmm. okay. um, and how would they, how, when could they bring food or other donations, toilet paper, dog food, whatever? Almost any time during the day. If we're not okay. here at the food pantry, which is Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the office is open here. Mm -hmm. um, and Father is here all the time. <laughs> okay. And of course, checks could be mailed in to St. Pat's oh, yes. Rectory. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Here at the food pantry. We certainly have been very fortunate. Uh, uh, to be able to receive uh, checks that have been made out in memory of people who have uh, been deceased. Uh, unfortunately, with the uh, COVID-19 uh, that has been happening and people have been passing away uh, more than usual, if you will, uh, through the obituaries, uh, people have been uh, suggesting uh, different uh, donations to uh, different worthwhile organizations. And certainly our parish has been uh, one of those worthwhile organizations and the food pantry certainly is uh, uh, connected to the parish, and we certainly help them out as much as we can. Uh, so certainly not only our own parishioners not only uh, donate very generously to the food pantry, but also people who have been co-workers and relatives and people who are far away who have been able to read uh, the obituaries, especially online and so forth, to be able to uh, do something because uh, uh, they want to feel connected to their loved one who has passed away. And certainly we have been beneficiaries of all of that. So the parish certainly is very thankful. The food pantry is certainly very thankful. And we certainly want to be able to continue that tradition. Okay, and Tom, if I could get back to you just for a moment on, sure. on the people using the service. Have you seen changes in the type of people? Or, or is there a greater demand? Have you seen greater numbers of people? Actually, it's been, been holding pretty steady, really. We, mm -hmm. we haven't, 
We see a lot of the same people week after week. Uh, mm -hmm. We get some, some new people this in the last you know two weeks or so that we've mm -hmm. seen mm -hmm. uh, coming for the first time and they're, mm -hmm. they're kind of unfamiliar. We kind of moved our whole operation mm -hmm. outside our door mm -hmm. okay. and we placed the bags on tables outside. Mm -hmm. uh, we asked people to come for the first time to register but we've kind of waived that with the, with the pandemic. It's, mm -hmm. uh, uh, people sign up for the uh, a bag and take their bag but at this point if they need a bag they can take it we we don't mm -hmm. really turn away anybody and you, they don't have to be a member of the parish or even the neighborhood is that correct that's correct, that's mm -hmm. correct. okay father i want to make sure there's a couple things everything um this is about <laughs> this is nourishment of the soul we're helping a lot of people that mm -hmm. wouldn't be eating if it wasn't mm -hmm. for saint patrick's food pantry here mm -hmm. let's talk about mm -hmm. Who do you call? What's the phone number? Somebody wants to contact. What's the number at St. Patrick's Rectory? Uh, certainly yeah. the, the, the main phone number is a 570 area code, a 344-2679. And we always have somebody 24 hours a day, seven days a week to be able to answer that phone. Father, somebody's watching the show that knows that St. Patrick's Parish is doing great work in Lackawanna County, mm -hmm. and especially with this pandemic going on. You have been doing this for decades. Mm -hmm. Now we're in a point where this is needed more than it's ever been needed before. Mm -hmm. What's the address? Somebody wants to write a check. Who do they send it to, and how's the check written out? Uh, certainly you write it out to St. Patrick's Parish, uh, 1403 uh, Jackson Street, right here in Scranton, uh, 18504. And certainly uh, all of the donations certainly will be used appropriately uh, to be able to help out, as Tom said, uh, as many people as possible. And uh, certainly, as you mentioned, you know, food for the soul, it, uh, knowing that there is some food out there that can be given to people certainly takes the stress yeah. and, 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 and the nervousness and the anxiety of what people are going through with this uh, uh, time of the year. And certainly to be able to help as many people as possible to relieve that stress certainly makes us worthwhile. You know, we all think about it, you know, you, you might have a full refrigerator at home. Well, there's those citizens out there, whether mm -hmm. it's the pandemic or it's regular mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. that just don't have that type of food. Mm -hmm. And your pantry takes that burden off them, that worrisome mm -hmm. moment where like, they're not able mm -hmm. to feel like, there must be nothing worse than a parent not able to feed their child properly. Mm -hmm. But you're there to help mm -hmm. curve, to mm -hmm. satisfy, satisfy that urge. Mm -hmm. Now. Talk a little bit. Now, this is for yourself and Tom, and mm -hmm. whichever one like to jump in first. Mm -hmm. What's the look on their face? Now, they come in, or, I mean, in the past, you could actually physically really be close to them. Now, you mm -hmm. put it out on a table because mm -hmm. of social distancing. Mm -hmm. But what kind of look do they have on their face when they know they've got food? A lot of them are very appreciative. They're, you get everybody saying thank you, and they're very, you know, appreciate the, the uh, gifts, the items that we're giving them. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, too, just to dovetail on that, uh, one of the wonderful things that we do here in the office uh, with our secretary, Martin Carr, is that whoever sends in a donation, we make sure right away that we send that person a thank you so that they know that we are appreciative for every nickel and dime that comes in here to help out as many people as possible. And all those people who come, they look kind of sad and downtrodden, but they know that when they come here and they get a little sustenance and a little help, it certainly brightens their day and helps them out a little bit. I've seen people come and go from this food pantry when it's raining, when it's sunny out, they come well, no matter what the weather is because they know that they're going to get help when they get here. Father, the big thing that I want to get out today is you have the usual people that come in. I'm not going to say the usual, but you have people that come in that might not mm -hmm. financially be mm -hmm. able to afford to feed their family properly in the mm -hmm. regular life. Mm -hmm. Now during the pandemic, mm -hmm. you've got a lot of people that might be out there to be saying, oh, I really don't want to go in. I've mm -hmm. never gone to a pantry before. Mm -hmm. Now when you come in, there's no one asking you questions. Tell mm -hmm. them what, what happens? Someone comes in and, and they need food. What are mm -hmm. you doing at that point? Yeah, we certainly have a, a special separate entrance for them so that they know exactly where to go. It's right off of the uh, parking lot there on uh, South uh, Sumner Avenue. Ground at, level. Uh, ground level, thank you, uh, to be able to come. And when they come to the door, they come to people who have uh, you know, a smile on their face, a welcoming attitude. Uh, it's non-judgmental. We certainly don't judge people for their circumstances. Uh, people who make decisions on where to spend their money, on food, on bills, on 
family life and so forth, and we certainly want to be able to uh, help in that regard. Mm -hmm. And every one of the volunteers that come to us and help us out certainly have that same attitude uh, to be able to have enough food and enough bags to be able to give to enough people on a regular basis. And Tom certainly, uh, for all the years that he's been here, almost a decade, uh, to be able to do that uh, certainly is a, a wonderful personality. And we certainly thank him for all of his time and effort to be able to do that. Tom certainly has not shared this, but I certainly will share it on his behalf, that not only do we receive donations, but Tom, who takes uh, some of the uh, cash and uh, uh, financial donations, and actually goes out and shops for us. And to be able to know what the people are asking for and to know what sales there are and what stores to go to, to be able to get the best price, to be able to get the most quantity, to be able to get the best quality and so forth. And certainly, Tom, that's one of the uh, job descriptions uh, that you've been doing. And all of his volunteers, he takes people with him uh, to be able to do that. And they all go with the same attitude, with the same cheerful attitude to be able to help people. And that's the number one idea that's in their brains. It, it really you? matters, Tom, really, mm -hmm. really. The heart of a volunteer is incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether you're a volunteer for war or you're a volunteer to help out a food pantry, mm -hmm. you're doing it because you purely care and you want to mm -hmm. give back and you want to help people. Mm -hmm. Now, Father, to your volunteers out there, let's be real truthful here. Mm -hmm. There's no food pantry without volunteers. Mm -hmm. What would oh. you like to say to your volunteers that might be watching today? Go ahead. One hundred percent. That's the truest sentence we've there's, said there's so no, far. There's no pantry without I no. can't do it by myself. No. The office staff can't do it by themselves, even though that's how it got started with the office staff. And then it broke out into the general uh, population of parishioners here to volunteer. And if we did not have the volunteers, I'm sure Tom would back me up on this, uh, we have to close our doors. Just like we did uh, Monday and Tuesday, we had to, well, Monday and Wednesday, we had to close on Tuesdays because the volunteers just were not present. So definitely uh, the volunteers are the heart and soul of this operation, no doubt about it. Volunteers, and like beyond the volunteers, and our, I mean, we have a different set of heroes now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Our heroes are mm -hmm. doctors and nurses and mm -hmm. first responders and mm -hmm. grocery store clerks and volunteers and food pantries. Mm -hmm. And they're in a situation where it was very concerning mm -hmm. in the beginning because sometimes they're saying, well, you didn't have to wear a mask. You might mm -hmm. want to wear gloves. Taking and now it's, risk. You're taking a risk. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and right now, even, there's a lot of people still mm -hmm. dying. You know, we're over almost at 100,000 mm -hmm. citizens across our country that have passed mm -hmm. away mm -hmm. due to the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And they're really, really taking a chance. Because, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, I mean, in all honesty, this is a war against the coronavirus, mm -hmm. and we're going to win. And as we were talking before the show started, there are lots of people out there who have applied for unemployment compensation and different you know, subs, you know, substitutes to be able to help them with their own financial uh, bottom line, and they haven't received it. You know, not there yet. So people are expecting money. They don't have the money. They're trying to conserve the money and do the best they can with the money that they have. And certainly to not worry about a meal, not worry about a, a dinner, not worry about a, a lunch or a breakfast or whatever. And if we're able to provide that, so be it. And I think we're doing a good job. Father, uh, I think it was two or you or Tom that said, said this. And, you know, all of us, not all of us, but a lot of people have pets. Mm -hmm. And your pets are like mm -hmm. family members, and mm -hmm. pet food, mm -hmm. cat food, and dog food is very expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, how much mm -hmm. do, you, do you give a lot of cat food and dog food away yes. for people? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But thanks to Positively for Animals, the, they're the ones that supply us with the, mm -hmm. the dog and cat food. Mm -hmm. We don't spend mm -hmm. food pantry money on the dog and cat food, thank, thank goodness. It was said uh, about a, a news story or two ago that the animal shelters are running out of animals because they're starting to adopt them during this uh, COVID-19 when people are at home looking for somebody to have some, you know, companionship. And so the dogs are being adopted, the cats are being adopted and so forth, and they need the food uh, just as much. And like you said, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. And Pat, maybe you could speak to the Catholic tradition of not just prayers, but deeds, such as Jesus' admonition, if you love me, feed my lambs, and the Hibernian tradition and slogan of friendship, unity, and Christian charity, and how we put that in effect. Yeah, as um, much as possible. this has been, you know, um, when this really are starts to take effect as of the middle of February, we were in the middle of actually Father Fox becoming the man of the year <laughs> by the 4th of March. Mm -hmm. And um, we were hoping that this, this situation with coronavirus would have been stopped. 
before it really got deep in our country, but it did. And we were prepared, and our members all stepped up to the plate. And um, I think Joe has some of the numbers. We knew there was a lot of places we had to give money to, and we're going to give more in the future. Joe, talk about a couple of the things that we've given to through the AOH Paul Hope O'Malley Division Four. Okay. So we have certainly given to St. Francis Kitchen, along with St. Patrick's Kitchen, mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of dollars, a thousand for uh, St. Francis altogether. We have given to the Community Intervention Center, which mm -hmm. assists with uh, people with mental health issues uh, and often people who are homeless. And uh, we have um, given to uh, other charities that have immediate needs mm -hmm. in smaller amounts, but nonetheless to try to help out where we can. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that the AOH has been doing, our brothers have been reaching out to the senior citizens. Like if you know someone that's older and that may not have contact with someone, reach out and talk to them. And I mean, that really matters, that little gesture. I've, uh, I've delivered for Meals on Wheels in the past, and I noticed that when I delivered that meal, the main thing, as much as the nourishment, was the conversation. So, I mean, I implore everyone, because the AOH is doing it, the Hoka Mallee Division is, is, please, if you have any financial monies to give, please, give to our food pantries. Reach out to the senior citizens in your community that you're friends with. See how they're doing, how you feel, and how's everything going. And the big thing, you know, people are afraid of getting the virus, especially the people that are older. If you're going to the store and you have a neighbor next door that needs some food, call them and say, what do you need? I'll pick it up. You need some help? I'm there for you. Because we're all in on this together. And like I said, we're going to beat this. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, we're coming up on 100,000 citizens that lost their lives. And God bless them. But we're going to beat this when it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. And Father, what if you, like, here's, here's one to ask you. What, what have you seen? Like, like, have you seen more charity in people's hearts? I, I'm, I'm hoping when this is all said and done, that the one thing that we come away with is that our citizens are more involved in their families. Because you really, that's who you dealt with all the time because you couldn't be out being exposed to everybody else. Mm -hmm. And that everyone understands mm -hmm. that. It's, it's better to give than to receive. What, mm -hmm. what have you seen? Well, uh, the uh, silver, if there is a silver lining in this uh, COVID-19, is that all the parishioners, and we have over 1,700 here at St. Patrick's uh, Families, that is, uh, and each one of them that I have tried to call and connect with and to talk to them, uh, they have all said the same thing. Father, what do you need? Father, what can we do for you? Father, we still want to be connected to the church. We know that we're not able to gather like we used to, but we still want to be able to keep that connection alive, especially through the community. And I have told each one of them the same thing. Keep your Christian service going, whatever you're participating in. Give to the food pantry, give to the parish specifically, give to the, uh, the uh, AOH, the ladies AOH. Uh, certainly the Knights of Columbus have helped us out with the United States Postal Service uh, on Mother's Day weekend to be able to have a large food drive, <coughs> excuse me, a food drive for the parish and to be able to give in that way as well. And I'm hoping that the spirit of service, the spirit of giving, the spirit of giving back, the spirit of being connected certainly will not be given away or in, in, immunized, if that's a, a word, uh, immunized uh, to be able to uh, give that away once the COVID-19 is over. But hopefully that mentality and that spirit will be able to continue far beyond uh, these days. And I'd like to point out that this need is going to continue for at least several months to come. The economy has been severely disrupted. People's lives have been tossed around. Uh, people will have difficulty meeting rents and bills and mm -hmm. payments of different sorts mm -hmm. for months and months to come. So mm -hmm. please keep your heart open, be kind. Okay, uh, it's going to look like some people who never, again, who never had need, who gave, will now be have to ask for help. Uh, please keep that in mind with your friends, your neighbors, and your community in general. Mm -hmm. Father, let's recap real quick. Mm -hmm. Where do you call? Now, if you want to call, you call the director. What's the phone number if you want to call and give a donation? Or what if you want to be a volunteer, if you want to give a donation, if you just want to ask a question, uh, the phone number is area code 570-344-2679. And our address here, St. Patrick's Parish, 
1403 Jackson Street, right here in the west side of Scranton, 18504. Father, I'd like to thank, thank you for the great work that you do all the time in making sure that all the citizens of St. Patrick's Parish are taken care of mm -hmm. and um, the religious needs are being taken care of. And Tom, mm -hmm. I'd like to thank you for all your being a great volunteer. But before we close, I, I know we have to talk about this, and you guys can all jump in on it. Um, ROAOH has had a tremendous loss. Uh, mm -hmm. Two weeks ago, our vice president, Kevin Shaughnessy, who was a great mm -hmm. fundraiser for the AOA mm -hmm. Truck O'Malley Division that mm -hmm. really believed in giving back and cared about the community and cared about St. Pat's and was a mm -hmm. member of St. Pat's. Mm -hmm. And Father actually did the, the prayer at the cemetery because it's different today. It's not mm -hmm. a regular Mass. And I know Father will have a great Mass in the future for Kevin Shaughnessy. Mm -hmm. Joe, would you like to just talk a little bit about Kevin, what kind of person he was and how we're going to miss him? Impact was immense. Mm -hmm. He was, he was a major player in our organization for sure. And we expected him to take more of a leadership role into the future and we're greatly disappointed in his passing. Along with him being a good friend to all of us and trying to help anybody who was involved or anybody outside in any way he could. Uh, and not to mention the love for his daughter Peyton, mm -hmm. who was mm -hmm. uh, eight years old, I believe, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. nine years old, mm -hmm. and now has no father mm -hmm. uh, to mm -hmm. help raise her. Mm -hmm. It's it's been a very sad time. I I know people who worked under him in his county position mm -hmm. miss him greatly, mm -hmm. as do many many personal friends and contacts that he mm -hmm. made through the years, and in particular in this area. Mm -hmm. Of all the uh, gravesite ceremonies, committals that I have done during this COVID-19, I have never seen so many people show up at the cemetery to be able to pay their respects. The, uh, uh, the AOH, Hooker Valley Division, with their honor guard, starting at the gates of the ce uh, cemetery, to all the people from the county government, to his friends at school, to his family members, his relatives, and just people in general that loved him, loved his energy, loved his spirit, loved his compassion, loved his getting involved, and certainly uh, were there to say prayers for him at the appropriate time. And thank you for bringing him up. He certainly will never be forgotten. I'd like to just tell a quick story about Kevin Shaughnessy. I left St. Patrick's, uh, St. Patrick's uh, parochial school in third grade, and I went down the street, just down the street to Alexander Hamilton. And the first person that I ever spoke to on the playground was Kevin Shaughnessy, and he came up to me and he said, my name is Kevin Shaughnessy. Mm -hmm. And we were friends from that moment until he passed away. Mm -hmm. And his thoughts and memories will always live inside of our hearts and souls. Mm -hmm. And to the Shaughnessy family, and especially Peyton, we send our deepest condolences. And um, what I'd like to do, our usual closing is out to say, let's community service and upcoming events, and hopefully to see you next week. What I'd like to do is have Father do a prayer on behalf of Kevin mm -hmm. Shaughnessy, Mm -hmm. and the uh, 98,000 citizens across our country that lost their lives to this horrible pandemic. Mm -hmm. Father, the floor is yours. Certainly. During the uh, month of May, for uh, Mary's month, if we can all please pray a Hail Mary together. Father, Son, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit amen. amen. Please join in. Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed, blessed is the, the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And may Almighty God continue to bless us in all of our good efforts. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Community Services and Upcoming Events. Please, if you're able to donate, donate to your local food pantries because it really, really matters. Thank you.